Uh, I think we're I think we're live now, Joe. Yes, Good are. morning, Revolution, and welcome, welcome, and hello, and uh, everybody here in the stateside and Latin America, African continent, Europe, Asia, uh, but particularly those in these United States of America, North, South, East, and West. It's been one hell of a week. Oh my God, you know, so many different developments. You know, I feel like I'm on a, uh, I feel like I'm on a, a, a seesaw, you know? One day I'm excited and the other day I'm like, oh my God, fascism is coming. Uh, it, it's, it's uh, uh, I, we're gonna talk about all of it this morning. Rosanna and Scott and Anita and Michael, hello. And good morning, revolution to all. Good morning, revolution. Good morning, revolution. Good morning, revolution. Good morning, revolution. Wow, that sounds like a little melody. We should make a song <laughs> out of that. <laughs> you know, it. Uh, the other day, the Supreme Court, in one sentence, told the Republican Party on the suit in Pennsylvania, go jump in a lake. And then the Attorney General from uh, uh, Texas, uh, uh, followed by 17 other states, uh, mm -hmm. filed a suit in the Supreme Court, and 106 uh, members of the House of Representatives signed it, Republicans, talking about overturning the election in Pennsylvania, in Georgia, in Arizona, and, and uh, in Michigan. You know, uh, Rosanna, what the hell is going on? Well, I don't know what's, you know, I mean, they're, they're just desperate. Clearly they're desperate. But I, I, I think they're underestimating the power of the people. Who in this country, you know, where democracy has been pushed to, in, in, a, to a, in our ideas and stuff and our thinking, that they think that uh, people are just going to stand by and, and be told their vote didn't count. It's not going to, you know, I have faith, a lot of faith in, in the working people that they're going to stand up and defend their vote. If somebody was to tell, tell me, you know, my vote didn't count, I definitely uh, would stand up and, you know, do something. But I think a lot of other people, you know, even, even Trumpsters would, would uh, stand up and say, what do you mean my vote's not going to count? Mm -hmm. Well, 90 of the Republicans did refuse to sign it, but that doesn't encourage me. Anita, do you feel safer today than you did yesterday? Or no, I mean, no, I don't. I mean, I, I agree with Rosanna that, that people won't stand for it if the, uh, if the Supreme Court goes for that. But it's so discouraging to see, um, you know, there are five members of the uh, House of Representatives from Ohio that signed right on to that. And uh, don't they believe in, you know, government for the people, by the people anymore. It's just amazing how willing they are to just, you know, jettison democracy in favor of their, uh, their leader that they don't want to cross at this point. And even uh, gratuitously that the Ohio House of Representatives, the state house um, also had a little letter where a couple of dozen of them, you know, signed on to it too, as if that matters. But, um, you know, I, I hope it's overturned by, by this afternoon, we'll see. Scott, even if the Supreme Court, let's say the Supreme Court says no, okay? And let's say that on Monday, uh, the uh, electoral college vote, and then we're gonna go Christmas and we're gonna eat turkey, we're gonna exchange gifts. And then on New Year's Eve, you're gonna go get drunk and celebrate. Those of you who drink, I, I'm not a drinker, so you know, I'm gonna have a little lemonade or whatever. Uh, and if you believe that, I got a bridge uh, this mm -hmm. over in Brooklyn. And then um, comes the vote, Scott, in the Congress to certify the election. Now I'm hearing that they're going out buying guns. What happens then, Scott? I mean, what? Uh, what I mean, um, what what will I think almost certainly happen is that the vote will be conducted, the results will be certified, um, and uh, 
you know that said there are there are probably going to be um there will be more threats against uh democratic legislators democratic governors um as you know as there were against um governor whitman in michigan uh recently um i don't think they actually have the strength to to overturn the to prevent the certification of of the vote of the electoral college uh, I, I don't see it happening, but that doesn't mean there isn't a huge danger. Um, and I think we have to keep in mind, you know, uh, uh, one of our comrades uh, wrote in with a, with a question um, uh, earlier this week asking, you know, how do we, how do we make our strategy, you set our strategy approaching this new administration, this, this, this new period. And we have to keep in mind that on the one hand, the people of this country voted um, in their majority uh, to hand power to an administration that promised to do something about the uh, COVID pandemic and, and the economic crisis affecting the working class. Um, and on the other hand, you have, uh, you know, another party trying to block and, and undermine uh, that choice. So part of our task is to make sure the people's choice prevails, um, to defend the legitimacy of, of, of the election results. And the other, of course, is to continue pushing um, for uh, a more advanced program for the relief of the working class. Um, a long way of saying that the, the struggle to protect the legitimacy of, of the elections and the defeat of Trump is, is far from over. But Michael, what about the, um, is the end goal really to affect the vote of the Electoral College now, or even the vote of the Congress and House of Representatives in January? Or do they have something else in mind now? I mean, you saw the Supreme Court, you, one sentence, get out of town. We're not even listening to that. This has no merit, no standing. And that might happen. Is it today, Anita? It might happen. I, I don't know. I don't, don't know. know I don't think we rule. know. I don't think we know. We don't know, I, but, but Michael, what are they trying to do? See, I, I, I'm kind of with Scott. I don't think that right now, between now and January 21st, 22nd, whenever the inauguration day is taking place, I don't think they're going to have the tools they need and, and the um, legality that's needed to be able to overturn um, the election results. However, I think they are planting the seeds, let's say, through all this noise and... Um, this noise and, and uh, complaining to be able to really needle the uh, Biden administration and the Democratic, if it's a, you know, a split Senate or, you know, Democratic majority house all the way through for the next four years. I think they're, you know, creating this like fertile ground to be able to resist. And I do think there will be more uh, threats to democracy, whether it be in the form of, you know, there's 74 million people out there who voted for Trump. I don't think all of them are up in arms about the elections being fake. But I do know I have a friend who uh, just finished medical school. He started working up in the Cleveland area. Cleveland went blue uh, in Ohio. And he uh, said that he has had patients come in um, numerous times this week. And the first thing they say when they walk through the door is, can you believe the Democrats stole this election? And he said, you know, I'm going to lose some patience after this. But there, there are there are millions of people out there who don't believe uh, Biden won this election fair and square. You know, they're getting their news from Lord knows where. And something's working. So, some the, the extreme right wing of the Republican Party is working in, term, in terms of um, and they're being effective with many working people out there who really, you know, they legitimately think that this election was stolen. And that's that we're not going to forget about this after January. You know, people are going to keep, whether it be in the legislature, whether it be in the streets, there's going to be a huge mass movement out there, bigger than I think uh, we saw under Obama. You know, all those racist people who said Obama is not my president. I think it'll be much bigger this time. So we should be prepared. Well, you know, I am uh, just, you know, I dreamed of weapons and militias and threats last night. I woke up in a cold sweat this morning. And, um, and normally during the day, I don't think about it. You know, I mean, I'm calm, cool, collected Joe, you know, and uh, grounded Joe and uh, not given to fears and conspiracies. 
but something is working on my subconscious because it's not the first time, Anita, that I've had uh, these kinds of dreams. And it all depends on the balance of power in the country. Now, I know we got a letter to the editor asking us what is the balance of power and how do we determine it? How would you right. approach that issue? Well, I, I looked into that a little bit this week, uh, Joe, and I, I mean, the balance, uh, I think the question was balance of forces. And I know we've used that term a lot. And I, um, and I looked to see how it has been used in, uh, for instance, the cpusa.org website. Um, and it seems to be mostly talking about, you know, the distributions of power on the global um, on the global level, the, 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 the relative strength of imperialism in the global economy, for example. Um, and I think that's what people, and the, the collapse of the Soviet Union brought, a, brought forth a, 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 a shift in the balance of, of forces. So I guess we can sometimes use it to mean any, the, the scope of power or the distribution of power in any body, like the balance of forces in Congress or the balance of forces in um, in uh, the state house, for example. Um, so I think it's, it's not, I don't think it has a specific definition, but we, we do have to be attentive to um, the distribution of power. Some people have some resources and uh, for instance, uh, right now the, the forces that are um, denying uh, the legitimacy of the election, they have certain resources in terms of media um, support uh, institutions and just uh, people's gullibility, unfortunately. Rosanna, I think there's, who has the, the, yeah, I, think there's, I think there's the other end of the balance of forces and those, you know, the counter forces to those who have power. Because that, that's the other thing that we are, as, as Marxists, as communists, we look at what, you know, what are the forces on both ends and that determines what is possible in terms of a strategy, in terms of the next steps, so it's, it's, uh, it's on both ends. We need to consider what, what's our reality and what is, uh, what is possible at this given moment in time based on who's doing what. In a certain that, sense. What is the balance of forces in this country? Um, so has... I think it, in a certain sense it's related to the, the idea of, 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 one of the ideas of dialectics, which is that when we make our strategy, we look to what's emerging, what's growing. We look to things as they, kind of change and interact. And looking at the balance of forces right now, what I see, um, and I, I suspect we agree on this, uh, is that there's, you know, there's this growing mass democratic movement on the left, uh, a people's movement that, um, against racism, against male supremacy, um, increasingly against uh, capitalism and especially monopolies. Um, and on the other side, there's this increasingly violent, increasingly reactionary um, movement of, of the right wing. Um, and those are, to my mind, the two driving forces of uh, political change right now. And this, the sort of center forces, the, you know, the moderates on both sides, whatever, are being, are drawn in one direction or another based on, um, the, the relative strengths of those two uh, main things. That, that's how I see it anyway. Well, but we have two camps in the country, Michael. On the one side is reaction, fascism, racism, male supremacy, homophobia. On the other side is democracy, progress, anti-racism, equality. Um, some socialism growing. What's stronger, in your opinion, Michael, today, this moment? Today, I would say, and, and this, I've been doing a lot of thinking about this question ever since I saw, you know, the, the question in the mailbag about the balance of forces. And I don't think it's black and white. As you said, I think there are at least two camps, perhaps even more. I would say that the anti-racist majority or the pro-democracy majority is stronger. It's bigger. And I think we saw that with the election results. And even beyond that, you know, we, we, we tend not to consider all the people who couldn't vote because of voter suppression and all these young people who are growing up, you know, under the, the Trump administration. And there's, you know, they can't vote yet, but they're, they think this is ridiculous and they know it's going to affect them long term. 
Um, but I do think it's an issue. I do still think that we, we have a long road ahead of us in order uh, to achieve working class unity. You know, it is a big 80 million votes sounds great, you know, 80 million votes against Trump, but then you have, you know, those 74 million um, uh, for Trump, right? And so it's not just, you know, working class and, and, and ruling class. And even within the ruling class, there's divisions. There's, you know, there's sectors of the ruling class who believe that climate change exists, you know, and they don't have problems making some reforms here and there. Whereas you have, like you said, the uh, far right reactionary that says, oh, it's a hoax, it's a Chinese uh, hoax, and this and that. Okay, we're going to have a famous lightning round. I made a proposition in a recent article that I wrote on the popular front, people's front. And I said that the, that the uh, Republicans and Trump are on the defensive. True or false? Uh, Rosanna. Repeat that again, the Republicans. The Republicans are on the defensive. True or false? Um, I think so, yeah, I would say true. Uh oh I'm in trouble, my coach. <laughs> okay, maybe. Although, uh, Anita, I, true I, or false? I, although, I, I, although I have to say that this offensive and defensive always confuses me, so don't, don't, uh, don't take okay. my word as a solid bet. <laughs> Fair enough. Anita, true or false? I'd say true. I think they're 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 lo they lost the election. They're they're the losing party, uh, and of course they're on the defensive. Scott, true or false? I'm with Rosanna. Um, the uh, I don't think there's a clear line between defensive and offensive. I mean, a cornered animal is on the defensive, but it um, its form of defense is to attack. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing. Um, they're they're in a, a, a weakened position, but they're going to um, they're going to put themselves on the offensive as much as they can. I don't know if you were a football coach. I don't know, Scott. I've never played football. offense or defense. <laughs> I mean, one one party group of people has the goddamn football. No, both both it. both had dialectics joe both at the same time you can't have the football both people have the football that's alternate realities now you're talking <laughs> Shro Shro Michael. schrodinger's schrodinger's football <laughs> they're on the Michael. 50 yard line <laughs> right 50 yard line uh -huh. Michael, who has the football the republic the, Demo the, the democracy not the democrat but democracy or reaction who has the football I would say democracy has the football just because none of Trump's plays have worked so far, at least, you know, after the election. So we'll see. You know, Obama, in one of his post-presidential statements, said something I, thought, I always thought was really interesting and it might help us get into this balance of forces. He said that there were several centers of power in the country that he didn't realize before he became president. Several centers of power. Uh, anybody, what could he have been talking about in terms of the different centers of power? Um, finance capital. The, I'm sorry? I, finance capital being one. The banks, okay. I, I remember after his first 100 years, I don't remember the exact quote, but I remember him saying, I didn't realize it was this complicated. Mm. Something to that effect. You know, yeah. in other words, you know, there's a lot of hands in, what is that? There's a lot of hands in the soup or what's it? <laughs> yeah. A lot of feet in chefs the in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. I, re good, I good remember point. that. Very complicated. But, uh, what are the other centers of power? When we talk about balances mm -hmm. of forces, so we need to know where the power lies. So there's the, the people's care. movement and it's mm -hmm. different components um, is okay. one center. Trade union right. movement. Trade union movement. Where yeah, else? I think it's. I think the mainstream media. I think that has had a huge effect on the way yeah. people not just understand politics, but even you know your daily news every day. You know. Yeah, they call it news sometimes. Okay, so the mass media, the banks, the trade unions, finance capital. But also the 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 kind of unelected apparatus of of government, especially around defense and national security, military, um, the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Intelligence agencies spying on everybody. Where else? Where else? And 
are there any other uh, places in the country, institutions? What about the uh, academia, the, the uh -huh. university? Is that a center of power? It Churches. used to be. <laughs> But I think the, the, the attack on experts has really uh, diminished its its The attack its, on science? Its experts. Mm. Uh -huh. You could say the church, too. I think the church, church. is... Church. Religion, yeah. yes. Well, the, the evangelical right, 40%, uh, 30% of the Republican vote, that's a center of power. Mm -hmm. But I think but we I should, believe. you know, we should look at that. I mean, what what in my understanding anyway, Marxism teaches about that is that there are all these, these centers of power, these, these clusters, these institutions, but um, in each of them, uh, the ruling class and the working class are vying for uh, power somehow. Some are more under control, almost exclusively under control of the ruling class, others, you know, more under, um, but, but there's, these are all also centers of struggle. Let me place the question a little bit differently, sharpen the discussion a little bit. Let's say that uh, in Georgia on January the 5th, uh, democracy triumphs. Well, we're not do endorsing anybody. Oh, don't, 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 don't get me wrong. But let's say democracy triumphs in Georgia on the 5th. What will be the balance of forces in the Congress? Uh, in the House of Representatives and, and in the Senate. Will democracy have the balance or will uh, the Republican Trump forces have the balance? Anybody? Well, I think Trump forces I think will it be would defeated. Depend on who, who, I mean, if, if every, if, yeah, it depends on who, who's elected. The, the, the balance of forces is not a static thing, though. It, it, it gives, it's like a snapshot of things, of forces that are interacting with one another. So if, if presuming, you know, we, we have the, presuming Mitch McConnell is no longer in control of the Senate, um, it's, you know, there's the, the balance of forces is going to be, again, I think between the extreme right on the one hand, um, a and a broad democratic movement on the other um, with you know the question will be how which side will will be able to get people like Susan Collins and and Manchin uh, and you know the the, the so-called the people that that fetishize you know being in the middle um, which side is going to be able to to swing them, and that—that's how I see kind of the balance of forces thing uh, playing. I was in a meeting once, Scott, Rosanna, mm -hmm. and talking about the middle. A comrade from Western Pennsylvania, from the Steelworkers Union, she said, "There ain't nothing in the middle of the road but white lines and dead jackrabbits. <laughs> <laughs> be, be careful about being in the middle." Uh. But, but you're right. There, there's the blue dogs. Mm -hmm. so, uh, one of the reasons that the during the Obama's early years uh, as president, uh, public option didn't get passed, car check didn't get passed, was because the blue dogs sided with the re with the GOP. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. And so the balance of forces, they had a majority in the Senate and they had a majority in the House of Representatives and the goddamn balance of forces shifted to the right. And then they won the next election with the Tea Party and it was all downhill from there. Mm -hmm. But we've learned the lesson, I hope. Yeah. And this time uh, we're not gonna make the same Mistake. We, not meaning the Democratic Party, but we, the people, the working class, Rosanna, uh, the women, the uh, uh, people of color, the, the LGBTQ people, the, the youth, we're going to hit the ground running and keep the pressure on. Am I right or wrong? You're right. I think that, right. you know, it, it's people are, are much more savvy this time around. Much more and, mindful. 
and 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 that's where the fight has to be. So stay safe, stay strong, stay physically distant, but socially close, and stay in the fight. Have a good week, everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye. All right. Later. Write later. to us. Tell us what you think about the balance of forces. <laughs> we want your opinion. Right. You know, CPUSA at CPUSA.org. Take care, everybody. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Long live dialectics. Two football <laughs> 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 Two. <laughs>